Hey, welcome back to Crimes in the Closets. This is Christy in my closet in St. Louis. And this is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. Happy Monday, Beth. Happy Monday. How's it going? Well, we all have the plague. <clears throat> the well. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably hear I sound like stuffy kind of. Everyone in my house has been sick all week. That's Today is the first day that they have all gone to school, my children. <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> It has been terrible. I have to have carpet cleaners come to my house. So oh. there you go. And there's that, but it's like some people have colds and then there's stomach bugs and then there's strep throat and then there's the plague. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. We had we had a funk that happened in our house, but it that kind of lasted a long time. I never got it, but I started to feel something, but took emergency, which is my my go-to. Mm-hmm. And it halted it, but I still had this thing where I had to just kind of like, <clears throat> yeah. But it never turned into anything more than that. So I'm like, fought it, I won. Oh. <laughs> Immunity of steel. Yes, I do. I do have a good immune system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what's going on here. What's going on there? Uh, nothing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, have you been following in the new true crime news about this Madeline McCain thing? <gasps> oh my gosh. Yes. I don't know why I didn't write you yesterday or the day before, but I was like, I saw it. I probably, I think I went on an Instagram feed and I saw a post. And so oh, then I, started- I followed, I followed this account on oh, our okay. Instagram. So that's why it showed up probably. Okay. okay. So if you guys don't know about this, here's what you need to know. So Madeline McCain, she little girl went missing in, where were they, Portugal? Mm -hmm. On vacation. Okay. Never been found. Didn't her parents, like, weren't they, like, at dinner across the street and the kids all were sleeping? Well, not across the street. They were in a hotel, like a resort hotel. And they were eating dinner, like, down there below with, like, friends that they were on vacation with. And they were all taking turns. Checking. Like every 30, 45 minutes going back up and checking on all the kids. And one time they went to check and she was missing. Mm-hmm. Right. She's never been found ever. And they do like like a guy for abducting her and murdering her. They assume that she is not alive, mm-hmm. but he's not been convicted or anything. She's, her body's never been found. Okay. So there's that. That was like 2000. Seven or something. Yeah. So now there is this woman from Poland who Mm -hmm. has come forward and said that she is – she believes that she might be Madeline McCain. Mm -hmm. She has a connection to this guy who they think took Madeline. Oh, I hadn't read that part yet. And yes, like she says – he was around during her childhood and that she was sexually assaulted by him. Mm. She doesn't have any like memory of her like early childhood Mm -hmm. and all this stuff. She has like birth marks that are very similar to Madeline McCain's. Like one specific is her, she like the iris of her, her pupil. It's a rare. Yeah. 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 It's like a a abnormality Mm -hmm. in the coloring of her eye. And she does have it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you can look up a picture of this woman and there's a resemblance. Like, mm-hmm. if you really take a look at, like, pictures of her when she was a kid and mm-hmm. compare them to pictures of Madeline. Okay, so she has this Instagram called I Am Madeline McCain, which I oh. followed. Oh, which so is that why- wasn't the one that I that I saw it on. Right. Okay. Well, I but, followed mm-hmm. her Instagram and she's a little odd. She's a little odd. Okay. But so she has asked for her parents to take a DNA test to prove whether she really is their child. And they will not. They refuse. So now she is trying to get Madeline's parents. Well, I saw that they agreed. Well, okay. So if you, it does say that in the headlines, but if you actually read, it says an, uh, unnamed family member of Madeline oh. McCain's has agreed. Okay. To a DNA. It doesn't say who it is. And okay. her, Madeline's parents are not speaking publicly about this woman. 
Okay. So we don't know if it's her parents that are agreeing to the DNA test or like a random uncle or something, or if it's anybody and in, in it's never, no one's come forward and said, it's me. I am trying to prove if this is her or not. Right, 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 right. But anyway, so that's been going on and I've yeah. been invested. <laughs> and she hasn't been the first one that has tried to claim she is Madeline. Right. Which is my so, guess why the parents are not speaking publicly about it. Right. But I wish her parents would do the DNA test. Yeah. Because if she – because and it's so disruptive to the McCains because, like, they've lost their daughter. Mm-hmm. She's been missing for all of these years. And now you're, like, redrudging everything up when it's believed that she is not alive. Right. Like, it's less invasive for that woman that's claiming to be her, possibly claiming to be her, to do the DNA test. Right. Yes. No, I agree. But, yeah, I read that they, are they like, basically won't even talk to her right now because Mm -hmm. she's claiming this. Um, But my question is, because I didn't dive that deep into it, is why can't she do DNA? They must have DNA from Madeline from years ago to compare it to. Why can't she just do one and then, like, police can just submit her DNA? Yeah. I don't think that police are willing to do that. Mm -hmm. I think police are like, you're a crazy lady. And no, we don't think that you're her. We believe that she is dead and we're not going to use resources on you. Do it independently. Yeah. Yeah. But then they're not going to give her Madeline's DNA. Right. But she, yeah, but she needs something to compare it to. Right. So she's trying to get family members to voluntarily do this, not related to an investigation or police. Yeah. I mean, I I was looking at stuff and she does have lots of similarities. So it it's it yeah, if you delve. Yeah. It's interesting. Like the the dimple, the freckles, mm-hmm. um the eye yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Stay that tuned. Is, yeah, I know. I I definitely like like I said I saw it briefly so then I like started reading a little bit when I had a minute and I was like I'm definitely going to have to keep an eye on this cuz this is yeah. very fascinating. I started to message you to talk to you about it and then I was mm-hmm. like well first of all it would be annoying to talk about over text message because <laughs> it's like so much information that I knew mm-hmm. it was like an in person and then I was like you know what I bet people like that listen are following this too so we'll just yeah. talk about it with everyone. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So there you have it. Yeah. Interesting. It is very interesting. It's interesting the things that grab a hold of me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, let me yeah. read for one full hour about this. Right. <laughs> Stranger <laughs> in the news. Like, it's fine. I'm fine. The rabbit, the hole, the rabbit hole that we go into. It sucks you in sometimes. You can't mm-hmm. explain it. Yeah. Jen, well. All right. Well. That's what I have. Okay. Uh, we don't have anything else. Don't forget we have a phone number, people. You could call us, yeah. leave us a message, text us, whatever. It's on our um, it's in our link tree uh, on our Instagram page. And also, our podiversary is coming up. Ah, yes. yes Next yes. month, March. Mm-hmm. And it'll be three years. And we've got – we're planning. Yes, we are. We, we are, are making some plans. So stay tuned. Should be kind of exciting if we can pull it off. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Stay tuned. Hopefully, maybe by next week we'll have a little bit more information. Maybe. Yeah. So okay, but for now we'll just leave you with that very vague teaser. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> and also tell you a crime story if you would like to hear one. Let's do that. Okay. So. Here we are with another case. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. This one was recommended by our friend on Instagram, Deborah. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Deborah. Thank you for your suggestion. Uh, you know, I keep forgetting lately to ask if there's like any connection, but I feel like typically people say that when they send it in, if they have some yes. personal connection. But anyway, so I don't think that there is one, but sent this to us. Quite a while back, actually, I think. Um, but this is Amanda Blackburn, the case of 
for the story of Amanda Blackburn. Okay. I don't know it. I didn't either. And honestly, I say that later in in my notes too, but like it was apparently went national, but I don't remember it at all. And it was during a time that I feel like I should have, like it wasn't that long ago. But anyway. Okay. Can't know all of them. Right. Exactly. That's true. (laughs) Amanda Grace Byers was born on July 31st, 1987. And I don't know how to say this town, but I always see it. Muskegon, Muskegon, Michigan. Muskegon, Muskegon. Oh, see? I do know how to say it. (laughs) The girl who can say no words. (laughs) I kept looking at it thinking there's, I know there's a way to say this, but I cannot figure it out. I should have looked it up, but thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Muskegon. I'm here. I'm here anytime you need me to pronounce things correctly or incorrectly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We don't stay in Muskegon, though. She's just born there. <laughs> but we are in Muskegon, Michigan, and she, her mom and dad are Phil and Robin Byers. She has an older sister, Amber, and an older brother, James. She's very close to her sister. The family moved to Indianapolis, where her dad became the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Elkhart, in okay. Lake Indiana, somewhere near like the area of Indianapolis. She graduated from Elkhart Christian Academy in 2006 and then graduated from Pensacola Christian College in 2008 with an associate's degree. So That's in Florida, right? Yes, Pensacola. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very religious family. Apparently. Her father's a pastor. She's going to Christian schools. Very religious. She really lived her family's religious beliefs and made it her calling in life to love and serve everyone that she met. She made it her mission to see as many people as she could come to know Jesus as her savior. Okay. As their savior, not hers. I mean, (laughs) also hers. Yes. Got it. Yeah. She made a purity pledge when she was younger and she refused to even kiss someone before she was married. So this is like real serious Mm -hmm. purity pledge because I know of like purity pledges and it's like, well, she's not going to have sex before marriage. Right. You know, this is like that. Nada. Nothing. No physical contact whatsoever. Yeah. Maybe a little hand-holding. I don't know. (laughs) Anyway. At some point during college, she met Davy Blackburn on a blind date. Her sister was dating Davy's best friend, and so they set them up. Davy was in college in Southern Wesleyan University in South Carolina. Okay. Heard of that. Also a religious school, right? Yes. Well, okay. his father is also a pastor. Okay. So perfect little match here. Um, he lo- – so because – well, he played baseball. Sorry. This is a total side note. It doesn't really matter, but he played baseball in college there. Dad was a pastor, so he loved the commitment that Amanda made to her faith and herself. And so it wasn't a, like, hindrance to their relationship at all. Mm-hmm. They are like-minded people. Yes, they are. Davey was on fall break when he and Amanda had met. And so they hit it off and he ended up spending like the entire week with her. Mm -hmm. They continued on with a long distance relationship and would just spend random stretches of a few weeks together. So they like dated, but was never really in the same state except for like, you know, a break here or there. And it was just for a couple weeks at a time. Yeah. That's okay. It is okay. I mean, honestly, Emery and I met and literally like two months later left, Mm -hmm. I left to go back to New York. And then for our whole three year relationship, we were long distance until we got married. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I knew the whole time. Wes and I were long distance too for like a year. Well, yeah. I mean, we got engaged a year and a half later. And then like, I think it was like, I don't know, maybe six months before we got married, he came and he moved to New York. Okay. Before. But for the most part, I mean, we were already engaged, but he yeah. moved. So you anyway. can make it work, people. Yeah. You can make it work. <clears throat> so. The two got married on August 1st, 2008, in a joint wedding ceremony with her sister. That's how close her and her sister were. Oh, oh my gosh. It's like that Extreme Sisters show. Yeah. Well, I don't even know what that is, but it is an Extreme Sisters show. Weirdest show on the planet. Oh, really? Let me tell you, I got sucked into an episode of that and was like, anyways, side note. We don't okay. even have that'll be a Patreon. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll have to watch it so we can really dive I, in. You know what? I don't recommend it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Well, anyway, this is a really close sister relationship because, I mean, in my head, I'm also thinking like, I don't know. I mean, I- I've never been super, super close with my sister. We're trying to get our relationship back right now, which is a great thing. But like, I don't know that I'd want to share my wedding day with anyone. No. No matter how close I was with them. <laughs> I wouldn't even want to share it with like my favorite, like best person ever. It's like, that's right. your day, man. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, super sweet. Fine. They're, they work for them. So. Okay. The couple lived for four years in South Carolina, where Davy served as an associate pastor at New Spring Church. And in 2012, they moved back to Indianapolis to start a non-denominational church called Resonate Church. Okay. So they're like church planting. Mm -hmm. This church in their vision would cater to like younger people, you know. Okay. We're a younger couple. We're going to run the – it's going to – they're going to – I like that. Yeah, advice on relationships by sharing their own experiences and being honest about their struggles and how they overcame them, blah, blah, blah. So in 2014, they welcomed their first child into the world, and his name is Weston. Oh. Yeah, this is cute. Amanda, Davy, and Weston Blackburn were the perfect little family, and they were building a strong religious community around them. In 2015, they find out that they're expecting another bundle of joy. And without any official tests being done, because it's like literally there, she's like 12 weeks pregnant or whatever, Amanda just knows she's having a little girl. Mm-hmm. And they decide that her name is going to be Everett, Evie will be her short. That is cute. Um, Grace will be her middle name, which is Amanda's middle name. Okay. On the morning of November 10th, Davy left around 6 a.m. to head to the gym. I think this was probably a routine of his. He returned around 7.30 in the morning, but stayed in the car in the driveway because he was on the phone with a friend. So he finished his conversation in the car, and he was in the car till about 8.20. And when he walked into the house, he found Amanda on the living room floor, partially nude, her underwear on the floor next to her, and her shirt pulled up, like, above her oh, chest. Gosh. And she was lying in a pool of blood. He immediately called the police and soon realized that she had been shot several times. Mm. Thankfully, Weston was upstairs in his crib and completely unharmed. How old was he at this time? Like one? 15, 16 Oh, months, my maybe? gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda was rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately, 24 hours later, she died after they took her off life support. And so did the unborn child, yeah. which was a girl. Oh, my gosh. It was. Oh. The autopsy revealed that she sustained a gunshot wound to the back of her head, one to her lower left arm, which traveled up her biceps. Oh. And then one that entered and exited her upper back. There wasn't sufficient enough evidence to suggest that she had been sexually assaulted, but they thought because she was, I mean, her underwear was taken off and she's partially nude. So Mm -hmm. one would expect that that's what would happen. The community was appalled by yeah. this incident and this what happened to this wonderful woman and her unborn baby. And days after her death, they held a funeral service and more than 2,000 people mm. filled the service. And it was like, I want to say like four churches that like went in on it, like the one that they had started, the one that like their families went yeah, to, the like one from South churches. Carolina, like mm-hmm. all of them. That's cool. Yeah. Neighbors reported hearing a few gunshot wounds. Uh, wounds. You don't, you don't hear wounds. You hear yeah. <laughs> gunshots. Um, a few gunshots around 6.30 in the morning, that, the morning of the incident, which was like not long after um, Davey had left. He left at 6 in the morning. And it is stated that he left the front door open, but I would imagine that maybe that's just like something you, you do. You know, I mean, my kid leaves the front door open all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't know. leave your front door open. Um, or unlocked at least. Right. Yeah. Um, the neighbors. Yes. Just like heard a gunshot. Huh. Right. We'll see. And that's what I don't understand. Like, and, and well, okay. I feel like the wording that was said heard something, what they thought sounded like gunshots. So maybe at the time that they heard it, it didn't register that that's okay. what it was. Okay. But when they found out what happened, they were like, oh, my gosh, I think those were gunshots that I heard. Makes sense, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes I always you can get hear- so baffled by, by that, though. Like, I well, would call. 
Right. Or go check and probably get shot himself like an idiot. Well, and you know, Emery tells this story a lot about this, our first house, how one night he was home by himself and he heard like sounds, but it sounded like a car backfiring only to find out that that's not what it was later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess maybe like if you're not expecting that to happen in your neighborhood. It's a gunshot in hindsight. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So. But don't leave your door unlocked. No, don't leave your door unlocked. 100%. Them all. I'm Front such door, a, back door. I like literally run around locking doors. Like when I walk I see them in unlocked. my door and lock it. Like, and I train my kids to do this. Like, walk in the door, lock it. Yeah. See, my kids go out the front door every morning, and so like I get they can't lock it because they're walking out. And we we don't use keys in our house. We basically just use the garage. I don't have a right. Key. I mean, I have a key. You need to get one of those keypads. We do on I the have. back door. Yeah. Well, but when they door. leave, well, whatever. then you just hit a button and it locks. I know. They should just go out the back door then. Gosh, yeah. I went off on a tangent here. Okay, let's – it's fine. Lock your doors. It's all good. Lock your doors. Okay, so the neighbor hears gunshots around 6.30 in the morning, and another one saw – noticed or is remembering that they saw a dark SUV in the area sometime that morning. So okay. things are, like, coming back to people because they're like, okay, let's rack our brains. Like, what did Timing you Timing is here? weird, too. Yeah. Well, it is speculated that whoever did this may have seen Davey leaving – and like just happened to like be there and like was like, oh, well, maybe the house is empty now. Did At not six know in the morning. Okay, got it. Yes, I don't know. Speculations. So a few neighbors on the street have surveillance, surveillance cameras. <clears throat> and this, so they obtain some footage of someone wearing a hoodie and that's trying to conceal their face. Like they won't look up at the cameras. They're constantly looking down and they're just walking on that street. And so they're Police are fairly convinced, and it's around that time in the morning uh-huh. that this is the person who must have killed Amanda, but they they can't see him. So it's kind of like, hey, do you know a guy that's about this build with hoodies? You know, who knows so, their surveillance on this street? Right. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. So the police also le- realized that just hours before this attack, there had been several calls for break ins within miles of the Blackburn home. One person had woken up at like five or something and like realized their iPhone, car keys, laptop, and wallet were all gone. And then someone else called and said that their TVs and laptops were missing. And they were all kind of like probably within like seven-ish miles of their house. So they're like, well, maybe this was like somebody on a crime spree. And that's why they started thinking, oh, if they were in the area and they saw him leave, they're like, oh, let's go in and grab some stuff real quick before – Right. Back. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, they start getting some leads and they think they have an idea of who the perpetrators are. And then an informant comes in. Okay. Clearly not named because that's what an informant is. And they tell the police that they had information about three men breaking into homes the day of the attack. This informant said that they were with one of them specifically named Larry Joe Taylor, who, by the way, is only 18 years old at the time. Hmm. Larry, I don't know if it was that day or, you know, like later that day or a couple days later, had told this informant that he and two others, Jalen Watson, 21 years old, and Diano Gordon, 24 years old, Hmm. had broken into the Blackburn home. Larry stated that he had taken some debit cards and, like, gave them to Jalen and Diano. Diano. It's like Dion- Diana, but with an O at the end. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, Diana. I've never, <laughs> Diano. Okay. Or Diano. I have no idea. Anyway. So he had given them to Jalen and Diano, and they were supposed to go to, like, the ATMs and get money out while he stayed back. And apparently while they were gone, Amanda charged at him. So he shot her in the upper body somewhere is what he's telling the informant. And then he said he walked over to her, leaned over her body, shot her in the head, and just watched her bleed out. Oh, my gosh. You're 18 years old. Like, Were their debit cards missing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they had got. I'm, I believe they had gotten some money out of their accounts. I don't know how much. It didn't state or any anything anywhere in the articles. But Whoa, what happened to this guy that he would like be so cruel? I know. Like, oh, anyway, 
When looking into the suspects, they find out that Jalen had just been released from prison a few months prior on his second sentence sentence of burglary in three years. So okay. he's a he's a career he's a criminal here. Mm-hmm. Larry had a misdemeanor of public in- nudity and indecency charges against him for an unrelated incident in June where he exposed himself to a woman in the parking lot. So like he kind of had, I guess like had a warrant out or maybe like he was just due to go to court for that or something. I don't know. Why but- do people do that? Expose themselves to people? That is the strangest thing. It really is. It's so it's like, strange. I feel like I'd be like, ew. <laughs> like I just look at him and be like, you're stupid. <laughs> like I don't want to see that. Close it it's up. It's very <laughs> odd to me the, the yeah. thinking what, behind it. What are they expecting us to do? Oh, yeah. Well, look it's at your you. shock value, I guess. Come over be- here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, no. It's very strange. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So 10 days after Amanda had died in the hospital, police arrest Larry, Jalen, and Diana. Okay. <laughs> I can't stand that name. They realized there was a nu- were other incidents that they could link Larry to as well throughout the course of this investigation. Another woman had reported on November 3rd, so just several days before, that she was in the shower when three men entered her home, held a gun to her, and robbed her. Oh, my gosh. One man raped her and sexually assaulted her while the other took things out of her home. That is terrible, terrible. Yeah. When the others would come back in, they'd be like yelling at him. Would you stop touching her? Leave her alone. That's not what we came here to do. Stop. Like they were telling him not to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On November 4th, a man had been shot and killed after an attempted robbery. The same informant that had told the police about the conversation about Amanda's attack mm-hmm. told them that Larry had also talked about this attack and that he had killed the man after only giving him $10. After he robbed him, because that's all that he had on him. Oh my gosh, Larry is extremely violent, isn't he? Yes. Allegedly, okay. Yes, and Larry is the one that was sexually assaulting and raping that other woman. Yes. So when they pull cell phone records, it put Larry in the area of that other man being killed at the time. Hmm. So they're like, okay, yeah, we've got this guy for multiple things here. The. They finally make arrests, again, like I said, 10 days after she died on November 23rd, 2015, and they charge them with murder and burglary. Sources at the time of the arrest said they can confirm Amanda was sexually assaulted and that they had DNA evidence, but I only read that in one place. Mm -hmm. So I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised considering this guy's track record. Well, yeah, because he sexually assaulted the other woman. Right. And he's public indecency and, Mm -hmm. you know, so... But I only saw that in one place, so I don't I don't know, I can't really confirm it. Okay. They're also in possession of a stolen car from the day of the murder, which was stolen from one of those other people that had reported their car keys being gone and you know, whatever. What are they doing? Yeah. So when they conduct a search warrant in this car, they recover the gun that was used in the murder, the ATM receipts from hmm. when they took the money out. Immediately prosecutors in this case want to seek enhancement charges, which I've never heard that before, but apparently in 2009, there was a statute passed that allowed the state to seek harsher charges if the victim is pregnant. Oh. So that's the enhancement charge. So maybe it's like the egregious, kind of like those egregious charges that you see, like this crime was particularly heinous because blah, 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 and right. can up the sentence. Yeah, yeah, and it could months. possibly get the him an extra uh, an additional six to twenty years, mm-hmm, depending, mm-hmm. I guess. On yeah, it's like those aggravating circumstance types, things. right? But I think the biggest question would be whether or not they knew she was pregnant at the time. But I don't know why that would honestly matter because still you've killed two people and. But I guess there could be like some sort of clause of like, okay, well, if they didn't know she was pregnant, they didn't specifically go out to kill two people. But anyway, so we all know that the su- the suspects are not arrested and taken to trial within days or even weeks. It takes time for them to gather evidence and build a case against them. So in this case, they had some cooperating suspects. So the other two that were involved in this are okay. 
totally cooper- cooperating with police on this. They're rolling on their they home. And my belief, I don't know this for sure, but my belief is that because their intent was to rob only and then Larry took it like mm-hmm. steps further and they were like, yeah, we're not going down for that because that wasn't like what we set out to do. We just needed to steal some stuff for some money. Like that's all. Right. Well, and they weren't even there when she was killed. So like they don't even, they clearly can't be connected to her murder because they right. were there. Right. Yes. Yeah. And the other lady who was raped and is alive was like, they were, was saying, they were telling him, stop doing what you're doing. Like, right. this isn't why we're here. Wow. Oh, and also the person who like woke up and all their stuff was missing apparently had like security cameras inside their apartment. Uh huh. Nothing was ever stated about like if they caught them on camera by that, but it was stated that there was security cameras and that when they realized it, the three men that were stealing everything realized it. Larry wanted to kill that guy in his sleep because then they'd know, but um, they'd get the security footage anyways, even if you killed him and they talked him out of it. So I think hmm. these two other guys, like they didn't want to like cross that line of doing murder, rape, you know, they, they're burglars. Mm-hmm. Yep. So anyway, it's just bad. Yes. No, it's terrible. They shouldn't be doing any of this. <laughs> Terrorizing, but it's not yeah. like particularly violent, I guess. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because they went in while he was sleeping, took some stuff and left. Like right. they weren't trying to hurt somebody. Okay. So, um, sorry, I just went off on a tangent and I lost my place. Okay. So I do not believe, like I said, that they knew that there was evidence to suggest that they knew that that's what he was going to do. So on October of 2017, Jalen Watson pled guilty to robbery and burglary charges and was cleared of the murder charges and other charges for his testimony against Larry in his trial. And he got 29 years in prison. So he's still got a pretty decent sentence. Yeah. In May of 2018, Diano, Diano, or Gordon, pled guilty to one count of bur- burglary and one count of robbery resulting in bodily injury. And all the other charges were dropped in exchange for his testimony against Larry. And he received 25 years with a five-year suspended sentence. So basically, the judge delayed his sentence, and he's on probation for five years. And if he doesn't violate his probation, then it, like, just vacates that. Not vacates, but he doesn't have to go to jail for the 20. Interesting. I didn't know that that's what that meant. I've heard that like statement before uh-huh. blah, 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 with suspended sentence, but I did not know that that's what that meant. Like, Oh uh-huh. no, that just meant that he's on probation for five years. And then if he violates parole, he goes in for the 25. Right. He doesn't, he doesn't get it, but the conviction stays on his record. So it's not like okay. it goes away. The conviction uh-huh. will still be on his criminal record. Uh-huh. Okay. So here we are in 2018 at this point, and they're still building their case against Larry with the help of Jalen and Diano. Larry decides to plead not guilty and also to represent himself. In the case. Oh, great. Great. And he's how old? Like 20 at this point, probably? Well, 21? Yeah. So he, well, he was 18 in 2015. So mm-hmm. now we're 21. Years later, 21. Yeah. So I took a look at the court records in the case. Not like every single page, but there's like a list of like motions, like dates. And this is a motion, blah, blah, blah. And I like went through. I mean, it's there's so freaking many of them. Mm-hmm. And this thing drags on in court for years, like him getting access to like granting him access to the law library in prison, filing motions for disclosure of documents, evidence, witness lists, blah, blah, blah. Many hearings that were scheduled and then canceled and for one reason or another. And so it goes on forever. And then guess what happens? What? COVID hits. Oh, no. So then it gets delayed for a couple more years because we all Mm. know that the court system got disrupted at that point. So at some point in all of this process, the defense, him, his defense, which is him. Well, him, Larry. I know that they um, they also – you have to have like an assigned um, defense attorney that it is there to step in in case – What, like that supervises you or something? Yeah, they're there so that okay. if you're like, I can't do this, they can pick it up and like – you know, whatever. So they're like knowledgeable of it. So, but anyway, I'm sure they're helping him in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. But anyways, he successfully argues to have the pregnancy excluded from the trial. 
when he How? does. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know, but it's successful. They grant that for him. Anyways. So that takes out that whatever the, you called uh, it. Yeah. No, I can't remember the words, things. but yeah, the uh, enhancement charge. The enhancement, right. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and I don't know if that's where it was like taken into consideration. Like, well, they couldn't prove that there was any way he knew she was pregnant at the time. She's 12 weeks. She's not showing. It doesn't matter whether he knew it or not. He killed her and the baby. And I'm totally with you on that. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like there's probably something in there with that. Like, well, did he know or did he not know? Hmm. Kind of thing. So, right, right. But I don't know for sure because like I said I don't have I didn't I did not look through every single document. How can you <laughs> say that he didn't know if her shirt was pulled up and her pants were pulled down? And she's, she's pregnant. Twelve weeks though. Well like, that's she true. just she's weeks. at All the right. point where she just told people. Like so she's within, not like showing. days okay. of that. Yeah. I got it. So Still. on December twenty first, nope. In December of twenty twenty one, a trial date is set. They have a group of jurors that they start questioning. The judge starts questioning them. And at some point, he's asking them about their knowledge of the case. And it comes out that several of the jurors jurors know that that at the time of the murder, Amanda was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, at the time, this was a decent-sized case. Like it said that it made national news, so people just Mm -hmm. knew aspects of it. So it would have been hard for most people to not know. But anyways, because of that, the judge declares a mistrial. Oh, my gosh. So another trial is scheduled for June of 2022. Same judge, different jurors. Well, at this point, it's clear. It's made clear at some point that one juror. I, do you not realize I cannot say the word juror today? Like I have to say it two <laughs> times every time. Juror. <laughs> juror. Rural. Had, <laughs> they had learned details of the case, including its long history in the court and that there was a mistrial in the first trial. And he informs several of the other jurors. So the judge calls a mistrial again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Great day in the morning. <laughs> Finally, in September of 2022, Practically seven years after Amanda's attack and death, they have a four-day bench trial. So no okay. jury, a judge. Just a judge. This police family, judge. by the way, can you imagine her mm-hmm. husband? She's got a baby. Mm-hmm. This young girl, this whole community, seven freaking years. Seven years of a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Yes, Larry, Larry, Larry Joe Taylor. The judge finds him after this four-day bench trial guilty of murder, burglary, burglary with serious bodily injury, theft, criminal confinement, auto theft, and carrying a handgun without a license. (laughs) So he was like, hey, look at this book. I'm throwing it at you, Larry. Exactly. What else can I give you? (laughs) In October of 2022, Larry is sentenced to 86 years in prison. Oh, wow. Okay. And then in November of 2022, he pled guilty to the rape of the other woman. Oh, okay. Just days before. Who, by the way, she's never been named, Uh which I don't know why I found that interesting. But And then he received an additional 20 years for that Uh rape consecutively. So 106 years. Yep. He will spend over 106 years in prison. Long ass time. Long ass time. (laughs) Yeah. So the church that the Blackburns had started closed permanently in 2019, unfortunately. But just after Amanda's death, Davey said he had an urge to intercept, I'm quoting this from a website, intercept kids and teens in the inner city in the Indianapolis area before they might step into a life of crime and drug-related activity. So like Larry like, and the other two boys. Wow. Right. Wow. That's actually really big of him. It is. And- they, I mean, this family is clearly very religious and like has certain beliefs and like is forgiving and whatnot. So, not surprised that this is where he's like decided to like take his path. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also, keep me up. Sorry. A woman named Christy, not me. Hello. Christy <laughs> um, started going to their church that they had started in 2016. And the two of them, Davey and Christy had conversations and it was discovered that her father is like a chaplain in the prison system. 
and had like regular contact with the perpetrators in Amanda's killing because that's who he was ministering to. Okay. And Davey was like, whoa, that's like a sign. Wow. Like, you know, let's, you know, talk some more. And so they end up talking, the two date and eventually get married. Oh my gosh. It's not what I thought you were going to say. It's not where I thought that was going. I thought you were going to say it's a sign that he is going to start having a relationship with the perpetrators. And I was like, my eyes were so big. I like your version better. Good. Okay. No, No, he did not do that. Carry Mm -hmm. on. They now have three children. Okay. Davey has been met with a lot of scrutiny over the years. And I'm, I don't really know how to handle this because I don't want people to get mad, but I don't really know. But anyways, there's a Facebook page that's dedicated to the case and I've gone through some of it, not everything. Um, And they talk some about how it was suspicious that Davey would talk about the murder or, and like talk about how it was God's plan and how he like read a journal article that uh, entry that Amanda had written days before where she mentioned something about nothing is guaranteed and she'll do what she can while she can. And he's like, equating it to her like almost like foreshadowing what was going to happen to her within days and I don't know it bothers people the way he speaks of it however it is how someone who is very religious and has those kinds of beliefs would think Mm -hmm. it is it's not uncommon and it's also a coping mechanism when people have faith they have to believe that there's a greater plan and that God is in control and it's going to work out right Like, that is how they cope. Right. Some of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would say the majority of them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, and you're like, you're talking, he's a pastor. Like, Mm -hmm. clearly a faithful, like, faith-based mentality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure they were also, like, not happy with, like, maybe how quickly he got remarried. Because I think it was within a couple of years. But that's, like... That's nobody else's concern, honestly, in my opinion. Like how you can get married a month later and it's still not like super suspicious so, to me. Unless what do they were... think that he helped, that he was a part of her murder? So, Is that what they're saying? Yes, because also okay. okay, here I'm getting to that part where it's like they tie it in a little bit more. Two days before the attack, Davy had a sermon or said it gave a sermon where he had used a gun as a prop. Whether it was a real gun or not, I have no idea. Like, I don't know that part of it. He kept saying, because I watched it's like a minute and a half thing on YouTube that you can see. But he keeps saying that instead of worrying about how you'll pay the bill, worship. And he points the gun, like as if he's saying worship, not at his congregation, like off to the side. From what I can tell, I don't know. I can't really see where the congregation is. Instead of worrying about how your kids will turn out, worship and points the gun. And his last statement in the clip was that I saw, worship is a weapon we use against the warfare of worry. So it was his way of portraying that. And they have a problem with that. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with how he went about it. Message. It is a weird message. I don't think he's that stupid. Right. But they're like – they talk about how this shows how unstable he was just days before. And I, I think see. that was I, – I and I don't know because I haven't like really de- like dove into all of that. But like I, I don't know. It seems like a big stretch to me to try and connect him that he would like leave the door open and have somebody go and attack. I don't even know if that's what they're saying. But like I don't know. They didn't seem like they were having true issues. But again, there's not a whole lot of information about that either uh-huh. to suggest that. Anyway, so I don't know. I lot Lots of comments about there being more to this case than is known huh. and that hopefully it, more comes out. Interesting. So not anywhere in any articles did anybody ever suggest that he was part of it. So like police never said anything. Like uh-huh. he was never. He was never a suspect or anything. No, not that I saw in what I read. I mean, I think that we are trained as a just true crime community. Number one, it's always husband, Mm -hmm. especially if they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And there are no coincidences in murder. We say that. And it is weird because random murders are not common. Mm -hmm. 
except during robberies. Right. That is the exception. And maybe that's where people are like, well, it's just, what are the, what's the coincidence that he would leave at six and they just happen to be right there, these three robbers, and it just happened to go sideways and she just happened to get murdered. Right. That's, I get it. But they were randomly robbing people repeatedly Mm -hmm. that day and before. So Yeah, they said for like eight days prior, it was like this spree. So it is much more believable that it was random. Right. And if it was random, he couldn't have been involved. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I I don't, I don't see a connection yet, but I don't want to like knock anybody who has this great, huge belief that he has done something. I just can't. Right. I can't connect. They probably it. know something we don't, if that's why right. they think so. Right. So anyway, Davey's doing well. He's got this whole website, like website. And on their website, it's like, this is who I am. This is who I'm married to. But it wasn't always like that. And Amanda's on there, like that story. And like, so it's not like Amanda's been forgotten uh-huh, in this. Uh-huh. And anyways, he's got a podcast. Yeah. Called Nothing Wasted. He's like a coach, whatever. And they have a website devoted to their missions and seem to be doing well. But as that is all I know. That's well, he's pretty public, sounds like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he like podcasted like parts of the trial. Like I think there was another podcast that he did that it was like three, maybe three episodes. And he would like talk about the things that were happening with hmm. all of the different pieces of. Well, do you feel like that we have had a lot of pregnant women become murdered? I feel like it's been, a, yeah, we've had Don't a stretch. Don't you feel like, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. those are really awful. I mean, all of them are awful, but like, what's up with that? I don't know. I don't know. What? Ask the people. What's up with that, people? You keep sending the suggestions in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. I mean, I guess it's just more common than we think. I don't know. That's so sad. Poor Amanda. Yeah. Yes. Poor, and, and, and I hope they're Evie. Babe. I know. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Everett is a really cute name for a girl. It I is. Know. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's real stinking cute. Somebody mm-hmm. needs to put that on their list. Yeah. Yes. It's real cute. Mm-hmm. Not me. Done. Somebody else. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good case. Sad case. Rest in peace, Amanda, and your sweet baby. I mm-hmm. hope her, her little boy is okay. Yeah, I mean, it seems like in the pictures that you see on the website, but yeah. <laughs> and I do hope if there if her family members are still feel like there should be answers, I hope they get them. And I will say, I have no idea who's running that Facebook. I don't even know if okay. it's family or not, or if it's just like a community of people that like the are sleuth. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I I don't. I actually want to say it's not her mm-hmm. family, but I don't know that for sure either. Interesting. Well. Okay. There's that Mm -hmm. then. You guys can weigh in and let us know what you think or if you have any opinions on that situation. What we know is that's very sad and we're honored to tell Amanda's story and sucks that it ended the way it did. She deserved Mm -hmm. more. Thank you, Deborah, for the suggestion. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back next week with a regular crime. We have a Patreon that drops a couple times a month. That's pretty fun over that way. So if you want to weigh in, over there and take a listen. We'd like that. Tell your friends. Um, rate and review us if you haven't done so already. And find us on social media. We love ya. And always remember, the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closet.